Today we're gonna do one of my favorite things in the world and that is write a death metal song. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Taylor. I wanted to follow up on a video that I made almost a year ago. I can't believe it's been almost a year since I made this video, but I made a video about writing death metal and there's some things, I wanted to take a little bit of a different approach to this video. Now I'm gonna link that video below because there's a lot of really good information in there, especially about starting out, how to set up your DAW, things like that, that I'm going to skip over in this video. Today we're gonna focus more on the writing and the riff creation element of writing a death metal song, but there's a catch. <laughs> I want to do this from the perspective of someone who's coming to this very new, very green, if you will. We're going to do this from a complete beginner's perspective here, so I'm going to try and cater to beginners as much as possible in this video. The other thing is that this video is brought to you by the awesome people over at ToonTrack, so we will be using Superior Drummer 3. I really, really like working with ToonTrack because their whole philosophy when they sponsor a video is they want you to create something, not necessarily to showcase their products, but they want you to create something that inspires other people to create music and that really aligns with what I like to do here a lot on this channel you know a lot of times it's like gear demos and stuff or like making fun of things but if I'm being real with you my passion has always been writing music trying to inspire others to write music it's kind of why I started this channel in the first place we are gonna open Superior Drummer 3 here I just want to say I have a lot of additional MIDI packs and drum packs and things like that the cool thing about these expansions like the Area 33 Origin expansion for example is not only do you get a bunch of additional drums, but you get a bunch of additional MIDI grooves. If you're not familiar with what a MIDI groove is, it is essentially a captured performance in MIDI format. So you can switch the drums around, you can edit it if you want, you can change where the snare hits are, you can do all sorts of things. There's a ton of tools in here, we will get into that in a second. But to me, for songwriting, MIDI grooves are such a valuable tool, and you can see I have a bunch of these MIDI groove add-on packs. You can get those from ToonTrack on their website. You can also include your own user MIDI grooves also, but ToonTrack sponsoring this video, so you can get them from the ToonTrack website. Let's clear this here and for the sake of this video I'm not going to use any of the drums from the expansions like you can see right here I am on the Superior Drummer 3 library so this is the core library that comes with Superior Drummer there's some really really cool presets in here if you don't want to mess with Superior Drummer and get into the weeds on mixing your drums I don't blame you I don't either you can go over here into the drum and mixer presets there are a bunch of different styles of music producers like Andy Sneap uh, we're gonna go with Iowa I'll let you guess what this drum set is I think it sounds good. Now there are a lot of different ways you can approach this when you want to sit down and write a song. You can sit down and just riff out to like a metronome, but what if you're really stuck? What if you just can't get these riffs out? I said this in my last video, but I think one of the most important things when you're songwriting is to not be hard on yourself and not try to force anything out, but just to like get the juices flowing, get things going. And a lot of times the easiest way to do that is just to jam to a drum groove, you know? So we're gonna go in here. I'm going to filter this by metal because that's what we want, right? Let's just do that. See how easy that was? I'm gonna loop this in my DAW here. I have a track arm for recording. I like recording a DI signal always. That way I have flexibility to go back, use a different plugin, or reamp through actual gear if I want. I covered that in the last video. Again, that's down in the description below. Before we start jamming out to this, one of the things I wanted to do in this video is kind of give you some more tools for writing. So I'm in a drop tuning. I'm in drop B or something. <laughs> The note that I'm tuned to doesn't matter so much, just the fact that it's in drop tuning. So you could do this in drop D or drop C, for example. But I'm going to try and stick to double harmonic major. This is what double harmonic major looks like on guitar. Now, I don't think it's incredibly important that you learn theory to do this. It's just another tool that you can add to your songwriting arsenal if you want to. The reason that I am doing it this way though is just to give us like some sort of framework to riff inside of. That way we narrow down our possibilities of the things we can play. So we know that if our notes are... Those are the notes we're gonna use for riffing. So it takes a whole set of option paralysis out of the equation. Now the reason that I chose this scale and in drop tuning specifically is because when you run that across the first two strings, it looks like this. So it's actually the same notes for the first three strings, which is probably what we're gonna be focusing on when we start riffing. So you mix those notes up in any way you want, create chords with those notes. Let's just have fun here. Let's also go with a lower BPM. So let's start with 150 BPM. We 
could just really do something like that. Don't be hard on yourself. Like, is this a riff that I'm super proud of? Probably not. I would probably go back and revise this maybe several dozen times. Just get it out there. Let these ideas come out of you. It's such an important part of this. I see people who get paralysis when they're writing songs in every musical situation I've been in, bands, collaborations, all that, they get paralysis because they want to make it perfect coming out and then they end up like not doing anything. Just get things out there, you know? Sometimes you got to write a hundred shitty songs to get one good one. Okay, these are close enough for us to work with. Let's copy this. Uh, let's do that four times, yeah? And then we're gonna go back to the drums here real quick and I'm going to right click and show similar grooves. Let's add this fill in there, huh? And maybe we only want half of that. So we're gonna cut that down by half. We'll go this way with it. We'll use that. Let's cut this in half, get rid of that second half. We'll do double tempo here and then drag that same beat in. So I just want to show you some of the basic tools in Superior Drummer 3 that help me with creating songs. I use this stuff all the time. This is how I legitimately write songs for the channel, my band, my Spotify. Follow me on Spotify, by the way. There's a link for that down in the description below. Let's clear these play style. Let's clear all this other stuff here. Make sure this follow host button is on down here at the bottom, because if not, you will be listening to these at the BPM they were recorded at. See if that works. Okay, so we know that our last riff was. And this is pretty fast, so I'm probably gonna do some tremolo picking. Okay, let's just. Uh... We're not striving for perfection here. And really at its core, that's kind of what death metal is. It's variations of different double bass patterns and blast beats. Okay, now that transition is a little abrupt. Let's go in here. We're gonna click on fill, go through, listen to some of these fills. This actually goes with the second drum groove that we have here, so let's just use this fill. Makes that transition a little bit more smooth. Now, I want a blast beat in there, and then we'll do some like harmonizing. Let's go in here, we're gonna X on that fill, and then we're gonna go to the play style, and we are going to go blast beat. You can see right here in Superior Drummer 3, this family column. A lot of these are actual songs that were recorded by a real drummer, so this Mirthless one is an actual song. And that's the last MIDI groove that we used was from the same family. Let's just drag in one of these blast beats, yeah? From there, what I hear in my mind at least is some sort of like breakdown. We'll go here, let's try two beat. Nah, that's not gonna work. Let's listen to Power Hand China. That's nasty. Let's do that half time. It's cool, I like it. It makes me want to play guitar. So I think it's a good candidate. Dun 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 dun. Oh, this is fun. I mean, obviously I just played along to the drums there. It's not any crazy awesome riff, but again, just get these things out. Just get the scaffolding out. You can go and really refine these things later. I want to add a bunch of double kick at the end of that there, just to make it like really fast and you know fun. The way I would normally go about doing it, just because I'm so used to doing it that way, is to edit it inside of my DAW. But I want to show you how you can do that inside of Superior Drummer 3, because there are a bunch of really good songwriting tools. Let's drag this kick driven down here. So you can see here that the playhead in Superior Drummer 3 actually correlates with where we are in our song. So we're actually listening to this MIDI right here. There's no MIDI in our actual DAW. 
just so everyone's on the same page here. Let's double click this and you will open up the play style editor. You can just go straight into a grid editor here as well and edit this MIDI directly in Superior Drummer 3 before you drag it out into your DAW. But let's just go to edit play style here and I'm gonna select the bass drum. You can see we have a mount selected here. So it shows you when you hover over it, we have 137 hits in this region of MIDI. Let's take this way up. We want way more hits than that. So if we have 137, we want at least, I don't know, over 300, I guess. Okay, it's getting a little crazy. <laughs> Let's dial that back. I went nuts with it. So you can see it's a cool tool. I think if you aren't really sure what you want, maybe you just want to hear it with some more snare, some more bass drum, like we have the snare in here as well. And it just starts adding in snare drums, you know, and you can also move your power hand here. So maybe we want this to be on the crash symbol. Maybe we want it to be on the hi-hat. The way that I think about the playstyle editor is like if I was trying to communicate to a drummer and I wasn't really sure what I wanted them to do, but I'm just like, hey, I want more bass drums. Or uh, instead of the China, can you hit the, the crash? That's kind of what it's like. It's kind of like trying to communicate to a drummer. Uh, we're gonna restart this though, so. Since I know exactly what I want, I'm just gonna go in here and you can see all the kick up here. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna select this pencil tool and I'm just going to start adding in notes. I just want constant double kick right here. We're on 32nd notes. Let's actually take this down. We don't need 32nd notes. We need 16th notes. So we'll snap these to the 16th notes, I think. We're just going to, again, add these in here like this, and you can totally manually edit these to your heart's content. I just wanna show you what's available to you. I prefer to actually just drag these things in here and edit them directly in my DAW, just because this is what I'm faster at. I've been doing this a long time and just easier for me to edit it in my DAW. I'm gonna go through here and I'm just going to add in these notes. Let's zoom in here. We're gonna go from straight to triplet. We're adding six notes. We're gonna copy and paste those. And this is what that sounds like now. And this whole thing is just rinse and repeat until you have a song that you're happy with. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the refining process. So maybe, uh... Maybe we don't want to repeat that second part right there. So I'm going to get rid of those guitar parts and I'm just going to play something here. Yeah, let's try that. And just doing these little things like this really will like spice up your song very quickly. And so that is our variation there. And we can get into production elements and arrangements and all those sort of things. All those things matter. But again, this is really meant for beginners just to get your feet wet, just to get the ball rolling and get these ideas out of you and just get you making songs because that's the rewarding part of doing this, for me at least, and probably you if you're watching this video as well. So this transition is a little bit abrupt and probably what I would do if I was really working on the song, I would just refine that riff, make it fit a little bit better. But uh, I just want to demonstrate here how to do this quickly. On the arrangement side, maybe I would just drop out the drums and the guitar right there, one of the guitars. And then, you know, you could always go in here to the MIDI as well and just make it fit a little bit more. Maybe we want to hang on that first note. That sounds a little bit better, right? Maybe we'll add a crash in there as well. So the drummer's crashing and holding for a quarter note or whatever that is. And 
and then we can copy paste parts. We can go into a whole arrangement thing here. Just for reference, I've been recording for 43 minutes right now. So that's how long it took me to do all this and explain it to you while I was doing this. If you want to learn my whole framework and you want a little bit more of a deep dive and explanation on all of these things and me to show you how I go about writing songs for my YouTube channel and my band in as little as an hour, I did make a workshop called Speed Songwriting Death Metal that is available down in the description below. Hopefully this video was able to help you out. Hopefully I was able to inspire you to get out there and write some songs. That's the whole point of this thing. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you really like what I do here on the channel, consider subscribing or joining us over on Patreon for super OP content. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.